couldn't really find a straight answer online about this Parker pose. Uh, it's oh, I don't have it on there, but it I've got this 10 millimeter 3 8 Parker. It's Parker Push Lock 801-6, and I think the dash six just means it's black. But I've got this stuff, and I've been running it in my truck as a fuel pressure line from the fuel hat to the fuel rail. And it's been in there for over a year now with no issues whatsoever. Um, but I don't know if you can use it as a submersible line. Um, it's got two linings. So it's got an inner lining. It's got some, uh, I guess, nylon or some other kind of uh, fabric and then it's got an outer lining well the inner lining can obviously handle fuel so even if it gets soaks through and gets to the inner lining it's still going to be able to uh to hold fuel pressure uh, but what i didn't know was how much fuel pressure and all that stuff because uh, i think this stuff is rated at 300 psi of hot hydraulic oil so what i did is i've got a a gallon drum that I use for my lawnmowers and stuff and I've put uh, gasoline in it because if it works for gasoline it'll work for ethanol and of course it's I can't get to it if you don't have one of these little claw things they're worth their weight in gold it's better than a magnet in a lot of situations so it's been soaking in here for several days now and what I did was I uh, I plugged the end of the hose and put a uh, chuck up, or put a uh, fitting on the end of it so that I could hook it up to my um, air hose and just see how much pressure it'll take. And I'm pretty confident it's going to be fine. So it's been soaking in there and it's just slightly, you can see the size difference, it is swollen did swell just a little bit um, it is a little bit more pliable but that is about 60 psi of air pressure um, and what I did I think it was Saturday last week while I was running around in the yard and stuff mowing and all that I actually dunked this in here and left it at hundred psi while it was under water for the majority of the day but I can't leave this open gasoline container in the garage that we use all the time. Um, so I left it in there all, pretty much all day while I was out mowing and doing all this other stuff so that way I could leave the garage door open and ventilate it. Um, and it stayed at 60 PSI all day. I actually ran it up to 120 PSI. So that's 100 PSI right there. So that's 100 PSI, no leaks, no bubbles, no nothing. Um, and then to test it even further, what I did, because it's not gonna be submersed all the time, it's actually, um, it's actually leaking from this fitting right here. But it's not gonna be submersed all the time. What's gonna happen is, it's gonna be submersed when you have a fuel tank, a full tank, then it's gonna drop and drop and drop. And then it's gonna be in just dry air so what I did was I soaked it for a couple days, put it under some pressure, checked it, no issue. Put it outside in the sun with no pressure or anything and just let it dry out completely um, for a day or so. And then put it back in here for a couple days. So I'm pretty confident I could use this as an in-tank fuel hose with no issue. Um, this is actually this 10 millimeter 3 8 size. This is what the wall bros need. This is the size that these uh, 450s need. It needs a 3 8 um, And just to give you an idea, the one... Oh, shoot. That was not the hose. That was my fitting. My fitting popped out. And the reason my fitting popped out... Actually, scared me after that. The reason my fitting popped out is because it's not, it's not barbed. So this, uh, the other end of the hose, I actually had to thread this in because that's what I had. And I, to get it out, I actually had to cut it. 
gives you a good idea. So there's a, there's three layers here, um, an inner layer of whatever that is, some kind of nylon threads, and then the outer layer. And uh, this is what I've got. So it's Parker Pushlock 801-6 Black. It's rated at 350 PSI. So uh, me running it at 70 PSI is not gonna hurt it in the least. So my little air chuck here that I was using to plug it, it's not barbed, it was just a smooth thing. But it lasted, it lasted in there for, I guess about a week. Um, but anyway, so just to give you an idea of the difference between the, the wall bro and, uh, and what's in there. So this is eight millimeter line and it, it won't, I might be able to stretch it over the very tip of it, but this is eight millimeter line. Um, and I'm pretty sure the line that's in there is uh, 7 sixteenths, which is just a hair smaller than this. So I'm stepping up in the world, definitely, and I'm going to have two of those. So for the pump solution, I've got to go with plan B. Um, so I'm actually a research and development design team leader. Um, I design electronic products for a living. And whenever you're trying to qualify something, there's three things that you have to qualify. Environmental, electrical, and mechanical. You have to qualify those three things. You have to test and test and test until you're 100% certain that environmentally, electrically, and mechanically, it's gonna meet the requirements that you're placing on the thing that you've designed. So I did a little bit of research on, um, on just different resins and how they react with gasoline. Nylon is fine with gasoline. Silicon is not. So what I did was I took this little pump and I set it in gasoline for, it's been about 24 hours now. And you can see my little container, it actually swelled up, which means this has got some kind of a polymer in it. So here's what happened to the pump. Um, and what, what happened on the bottom side here where it actually pumps, there's this tiny little seal that goes inside there so that you get an airtight seal um, on this part of it right here. Well, um, after about an hour, what had happened was it had actually popped this off. It had actually fractured this and broke it clean away from the screws. And uh, this was floating around inside there and it was about five times the size, and you can see it's still bigger even after it's been sitting out for a while. Is about five times the size that it started. So what that means is this is silicon. Silicon absorbs gasoline like a sponge, and when it does, it expands. So what happened was that little tiny groove right there could not accommodate five times the size with it being locked in place like that and this plastic starting to soften. It just broke it off. So this morning before I got started, I just picked it up um, and started squeezing it and stuff and things just started disintegrating. So what that means is this case is actually some kind of a polymer. Um, the good news is the internals survived just fine. Um, the internals are encased in some kind of epoxy and right here where that epoxy is in place, um, everything was fine. So. Um, and you can see it just kind of, it's crumbling. Uh, so that is not gonna work, which is a bummer. I'm not too messed up about it because for me to buy two of those for testing, I wanted to test one and completely destroy it and find what the limits were, which I did. And then I was gonna keep one as a control. And when I found out what the limits were, that's the one I was gonna put in my tank. Um, the, both of these shipped to my house were $6. So I bought two pumps. And that included shipping for six dollars. I thought, well, six dollars, I'll try it and see. But um, I had a guarantee, I have a backup plan, so this is all trash. I've got that other little pump running around somewhere, but I had a backup plan. This is the fuel pump, the original fuel pump from my Dodge Dakota. Um, I took it out and replaced it with the Walbro from my uh, Corvette. So the Walbro 255 is actually in my Dakota powering my supercharged 4.7, um, which I'm actually kind of interested 
that uh, that pump is about the same size as a Walbro. Um, but either way, I will wire this up into the passenger tank, and this will be my pump. I know this works for gasoline, so um, what I'm going to try to do is find some way to step down the voltage from DC 12 volts to DC 6 volts or maybe DC 4 volts. And what I'll do is I'll spin this dramatically slower than the 14 volts it sees from the factory. Um, and because it's in open flow, I'll just hook it up to this corrugated line. Uh, because it's in open flow, there won't be any, it won't have a very high current draw because it'll be in open flow. Um, and I don't know, it'll probably draw more than that 300 milliamps did on that pump. I'll have to measure it and see, but uh, I'll, I'll get a I'll step down and I'll convert it from 12 volt or I guess 14 volt DC down to uh, probably 4 volts or maybe 5 volts DC. Um, that way this spins a lot slower, it'll transfer, and then I know this thing can just sit in there and run for eternity because that's what it was designed to do. Um, so this was always my plan B. I just didn't want to do it because it was going to be slightly more complex. But that's what I'm gonna do. So, um, and see, this is a resin, and it's been soaked in fuel for 15 years, and it it's fine. So there are resins that are compatible with gasoline. But before I even get that far, I've gotta put the car on the lift, get the tanks out. Um, so I've got quite a bit of stuff to do. Put the flex fuel sensor in, which means I'm gonna have to drop the, uh, or I'm gonna have to take the computer out from the um, driver side fender, passenger side fender, and pin that uh, flex fuel sensor in. So I've got plenty of work to keep me busy while I figure out uh, and order a DC to DC converter to step the voltage down. I'll take some measurements and stuff. I've actually got one of these little um, power supplies for an Arduino. I play with Arduinos a lot. Um, and this actually supplies five volts at up to one amp. So what I can do is put this five volts on that pump, see how many amps it draws, see what kind of flow I get out of it. Um, and I can't have too much flow because all it'll do is constantly overrun the driver's tank and it'll pump it into the driver's tank and then it'll flood back. And so it'll just constantly cycle the fuel, which is really good because whenever I put um, E85 in there, um, if you ever mix the E85 with, with uh, um, high test or something like that, what you'll have is E85 in the driver's tank and whatever you had left over in the passenger tank. So this having a lot of flow will constantly mix the fuel around. Um, so that's def definitely not a bad thing. But plan B, always got to have a plan B, always got to collect data, always got to test. That's my motto. Whenever I'm working with my engineers, I always tell them, I don't care about your opinion, I care about the data. Do some tests, show me some data, prove your opinion correct. So get started on the Corvette, drop in the tank.